With GCSE exams starting in just over a month, you're probably feeling really nervous about taking your first set of public exams. At least, I know I was. With the sheer amount of content you need to know, it is really important for you to stay on top of your revision. This is the third episode of a series that I am doing to help you get the top grades in your GCSE exams. And today, I'm going to be sharing exactly how I got an A star in chemistry. Firstly, I want you to grab your specification. If you don't have it printed out, then search it up online and do it now. Then I want you to go through each and every bullet point and take them off if you understand them. And if you don't, start or highlight it and we'll come back to it later. This is really important because literally anything that is on that spec can be tested. Also, a lot of textbooks usually include information that you won't be tested on in your exam, so don't solely rely on them. What I personally did was I always had my spec next to me when I was making my revision resources, so that way I didn't waste time on content that wouldn't be tested. After I answered each bullet point, I would take it off, and if I didn't really understand it, after searching it up online and watching a few videos, I would then go and ask my teacher or my friends. Essentially, you're going to want to do the same thing for the bullet points that you just highlighted or starred. I want you to go and use your textbook or your class notes or even the internet to help you fill in those knowledge gaps. If you still don't understand, then please ask your teacher to explain it to you because that's what teachers are there for. Also, I encourage you to turn each bullet point into a question so that you can use them for active recall to make sure that you fully grasp the concept. Secondly, if you haven't made any notes or revision resources, then don't waste your time making them now. Instead, start with past papers right away. I know it's counterintuitive, but it's honestly the best thing that you can do right now because examiners can only test so many things and the more questions you do, you realize that the same things come up again and again and again. Even if you do have notes, I'd advise you to start with past paper questions anyways and if you get stuck on a question, then refer back to your notes rather than just going through, rereading and highlighting your notes. Also, pro tip, if you're running out of time and you want to go through more past paper questions, then I'd suggest skipping the questions that you know you'll find easy and only do the ones that you know you will find hard or really challenging. My next tip is to use mark schemes and also keep a record of all the questions that you've gotten wrong. No matter how well you know the content, you won't get an A star if you don't use the keywords that are in the mark scheme. If you got a question wrong, then you should write down the exact wording of the mark scheme in a red or a different colored pen and then write out that question on a Google Doc or in a notebook with the answer directly copied from the mark scheme. Once you've done loads of papers, you should have a stack of questions that you've gotten wrong. So then after that, do them again just before the exam. This next tip is definitely my favorite one and a prime example of how you can study smart and not hard. Essentially what you're going to do is go through the past papers and not do the questions, but you're going to note down the topics. So what I did is I went through 10 years of past papers and found that around three to four topics came up consistently. So those would be the ones that I started working on first and revising before I went through the other ones. Now this is not to say that you should completely ignore everything else because they could also come up on your exam. But but the bulk of the paper would probably be made up of these few topics. Tip number five is to use online resources. There's this guy on YouTube whose channel is called Free Science Lessons, and honestly, this guy literally saved my whole GCSE career. He explains all the GCSE concepts in such a simple manner, and that really helped me consolidate and grasp certain concepts. His videos are literally three to four minutes long, so they're not really time consuming, especially because I watch them at two times speed. So if you find a certain topic challenging, then I'd suggest that you go onto his channel and watch a few videos. Another really good resource that I used a lot was Save My Exams. They have really comprehensive notes. So if you're someone who didn't take any notes and you're panicking now, then head over to their website and go look through them. It's completely free and I think there is a paid version, but I just use the free one and that in itself was really helpful. Also, if you haven't heard of this already, there's also a website called Physics Math Tutor. I'll link it down in my description, but essentially they have past papers and flashcards, but personally I use their topic summary sheets and I found that really helpful to just read over that before I went to bed. Finally, I just wanted to add in that if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or DM me on Instagram. Instagram. I know some of you have already reached out and honestly being able to help you guys really makes my day. So yeah, reach out at any time. Now this next tip is about memorization techniques and I know a lot of you have been asking about it. So in terms of memorizing, I think that this is really important mainly for industrial processes and practicals in chemistry. 
So what I did was I made sure that the notes I'd made about the search and process or the practical had all of the keywords that the mark scheme had. And then after that, I would blurt out everything I remembered about it onto a blank sheet of paper. Anything I missed out, I would then write in a red pen and I would keep testing myself until I wasn't afraid when I saw the question and I consistently got it right. The next thing I want to talk about is command terms. So for example, explain, describe, state, name, etc. If you're not really sure what this is and your teachers haven't talked to you about it, if you just do a quick search on Google and put in command terms, GCSC definitions, there are loads of documents available already and they give you really comprehensive descriptions of what each one means and what you should be putting in your answer if you see each of those keywords. This is really important in your exams, especially if you're pressed for time, because you don't want to waste time writing stuff down that you won't get any marks on. For example, if the question is state two alkenes, you only need to write down ethene and propene, and you don't need to explain anything about the structure because they didn't ask that in the question. My final tip is to look at how many marks each question is worth. If the question is one mark, the answer could literally be one word, but at most it shouldn't be longer than a sentence. Likewise, if it is five marks, your answer should be relatively substantial. And personally, I always make sure that I have six points just so that if one is wrong, I would still get the five marks. Also, if you're running out of time in the exam and you're worried that you won't finish, answer all of the questions you know how to answer straight away and then tackle the longer questions after that. If you enjoyed this video, then I think you'll really like my step-by-step -step guide on how to get a nine in GCSE English. In that video, I take you through how to plan your essays under time pressure and also how to analyze quotes. So make sure to check out that video. Also next week, I'm going to be talking about what you should be doing one month out of your GCSEs. So make sure to subscribe if you want to watch that video. Anyways, I hope you guys have a very productive week and hopefully I will see you guys next time.